What's going on guys? We're here to make another video today and today I've got a new gun to kind of reveal to the channel. Um, I just picked this up a few days ago. It took forever for it to come in. Um, they're on pre-order everywhere. But I've got the FX Dreamline DreamTac, however you want to call it, DreamTac. I've seen it written down on some of the websites. Uh, bottle version. I've got this in 22 caliber, the 300cc bottle. Uh, I've got a Donny FL silencer on it. And I've got a, Ho a Hogue folding stock. And um, I went ahead and threw on an Athlon Argos BTR scope. Uh, this one, what is it, a 4 and a half to 24? Something like that, 4.5 to 24. Uh, 30 millimeter tube, 50, mil 50 millimeter objective. And uh, it's a really nice scope. It's a minute of angle scope. And um, it's probably more than what this compact version will shoot. But uh, I do intend on putting a longer barrel on this at some point. Um, I've got a, a larger bottle for it that I can swap in and out. And uh, I do plan on getting some 500 millimeter barrels for it to test out that line as well. But for today, I wanted to kind of showcase the gun. We're going to go over some accuracy tests. Uh, I've got it tuned. I spent yesterday tuning it. And uh, at 50 yards with um, 18 grain, uh, it's a 22 cal, I don't know if I said that. With 18 grain JSBs, they're shooting what, one ragged hole at 50 yards. So uh, we'll demonstrate the accuracy. Uh, we'll shoot it over the chronograph, get a speed. Um, I've got the hammer wheel set on number uh, number four. My reg pressure is just under 150 bar and uh, it's shooting pretty good for me. It's a very smooth shooting gun. Um, I can go over the, well, I'll go over the final thoughts towards the end of it. We'll all reflect on, uh, compare, compare this to some other guns that I have. Um, you know, I also have the Wildcat. I also have um, the Impact. And I also have a B, an Adamant BP-17, which is another compact gun. And uh, I'll have a review on that gun coming up here in the next week or two, maybe two, maybe two weeks. And um, at some point, what I'm going to do is do a head-to-head -head comparison test on accuracy between this gun and uh, the Adamant BP-17. Uh, the BP-17 is a bullpup. This is more of a compact traditional layout, you know, more of a traditional than the bullpup at least. And uh, they're both in the kind of the same category. Um, extended, this gun is a little bit easier to shoot than the, the bullpup because it's got a longer radius on it from front to back. It's easier to hold. But both of them are very accurate, and I'm curious to see which one will outperform. Um, I'll, what I'll do is uh, shoot them at 50 yards and then shoot them out at 100 yards and uh, see which one puts better groups. So for today, we're going to get started by shooting over the chronograph. Um, when I'm out there shooting over the chronograph in the sun, I'll give a walk around on the rifle so you guys can check it out and uh, then we'll get some numbers put down as far as speeds and groups. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's go over what this, uh, what's, what's going on with this setup here. So I've got a tape measure on hand and um, I'll give you guys an overall length. Let me get this thing set up real quick. So from the tip of the gun to the back, folded up with the silencer is just under 26 inches. Without the silencer, it's just before the silencer, to the back looking at 21 inches so very compact folded up even with the moderator with that donny fl on there it is super quiet this is very very quiet gun this one has a 380 millimeter barrel uh, it's the gen 2 that's got the skinny liner so that you can use it with a bottle it also has a power plenum right there in this uh, right right by the bottle right here and uh, like i said earlier it's, um, i got the reg pressure set at 150 bar it's shooting very accurate uh, with this setup um, these things are sold out uh, most places are on pre-order um, same thing for the barrels but uh, at some point I've got several barrels the uh, several 700 millimeter barrels uh, for my impact and for my wildcat and what I'm gonna do uh, swap out bottles at some point with a 480 cc bottle and I'm gonna uh, 3d print a barrel band so I can stick a 700 millimeter barrel on there and we'll see how that kind of works out but uh, all stuff for the future let me put the camera down real quick and uh, extend the stock and we'll check some more measurements that way. All right, guys, so with, with this thing extended, we've got it all opened up now. The stock's unfolded and um, we're going to get a measurement with the silencer for my length of pull is uh, just under 37 inches. So it's still more compact than, say, your traditional wood stocked or synthetic stock rifle. Um, you know, that being, being such a short barrel and even with the silencer you know it's still shorter than say my marauder was or my hot sun nova star still a lot more compact than that plus you have the added benefit of it folding up um, it's very comfortable to shoot and uh, it's very easy to carry around 
Um, you can ca I can carry it from the pistol grip with the barrel pointing down and it doesn't hit the ground. You know, I can walk around with it basically like I'm, I'm carrying a water bottle. You know, it's just so easy to, to carry around in the field, very lightweight. Um, the scope does add some weight. So if you are looking to keep this thing lightweight, uh, putting a lightweight scope is something to consider. But uh, this shoots my needs and I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead and set up the chronograph and shoot a few shots and see what our speeds are. All right, guys, I got you pointed right in front of the chronograph and uh, I'm gonna take a few shots just so we can see what our speeds are. Pretty consistent, as you guys can see. Let's go ahead and uh, swap out for a target. All right, so I've got the target set up out there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and load up before I start shooting. Um, if you guys have ever noticed, some of you who watch my channel frequently, I've been uh, making boxes to hold pellets and slugs. And um, the first versions, they would hold a sleeve of FX hybrid slugs, the little uh, black plastic sleeve that the hybrids come in. And um, I used to store pellets and slugs in there because I had so many of them. I have almost, you know, I went through almost 2,000 of them between 22 and 25 caliber. So I have lots of trays left over, needless to say. Um, I since then have printed out these uh, 3D boxes. I also printed out these 3D slug holders. And um, I make them in 22, 25, and 30 caliber. And all of them are interchangeable with this box. They'll all fit the FX hybrid sleeve. They'll all fit... 100 rounds in 22, 25, and 30 caliber. I kept it all the same footprint, and um, they operate the same as my wooden boxes. They they kind of sl they slide open. You know, you, you pour out your little hybrid sleeve and dump out what you need to. And um, I will be selling these if you guys are interested, um, just as a way to make money to put back into the channel. There's always new stuff that I like to you know purchase to test. Um, one of those things being the new barrels and. Uh, a lot of this stuff isn't cheap, and uh, everything that I do make off of these, this stuff that I sell is specifically to go back into the channel so I have more stuff to test. Um, so that's something, if you guys are interested, in, uh, you know, leave me a, a note in the comments section, and um, I'll reach out to you, and uh, we can get together and, and figure out how to send you guys one of these. But um, they are really nice boxes. Um, I pad them, so if you walk around with them, that your stuff doesn't uh, rattle around, keeps them quiet. But uh, I've also got other stuff in the works as far as 3D prints. Um, I've been working on a bipod clamp for the Wildcat. I've also been working on a silencer insert for the factory FX moderators, the little factory cam that comes with them. And uh, I'm just kind of putting some time on all these products before I reveal them to make sure that everything works as it's intended. But um, anyways, we'll get back to uh, the shooting. Let me get this thing loaded up and uh, let me get the camera set on, turned on down range and we'll get to shooting. Okay, I've got the uh, target camera on. I've got the clip loaded up and we're going to take two five shot groups. Uh, the size of these targets is just under the size of a penny. It's the outline of a penny. So inside the inside line is, uh, I don't know what a penny is, but uh, that'll be our group size. I'll take a tape measure down there so we can reference it. But let's go ahead and um, put two five shot groups and see what we're doing with this tune.
Okay, the wind picked up for that last shot, but uh, that wasn't a bad group. Um, the gun's kind of just been sitting here while I've been running back and forth, and uh, that first sh uh, first group wasn't the best. But um, you can see that second group tightened right up. Um, once you fire three or four shots, you know, once it's cold, the gun will warm up and settle down. So um, if you guys happen to be shooting and the temperature's kind of cold, um, I don't, I, you know, if you're going for your best accuracy, I would burn off, you know, two to three shots just to get the gun warmed up back again. Because I noticed that um, before I was shooting today to make sure I was tuned in. All right, guys, sorry about that. A uh, little bit of noise there. The, the There's some stray dogs roaming through the neighborhood and it drives the dogs nuts. And uh, all the dogs for, for half a mile were barking. What I was getting at is that um, if you're shooting in colder weather and you're trying to get really good groups, burn off three or four shots because the cold and having the rifle set for even 15 minutes in the cold, the first few shots are gonna have a different point of impact. And I've had I've experienced that with any rifle that I've shot in the cold, any PCP air rifle. So uh, just a little word of advice there. Um, that last, the last groups we had, the second one was better than the first. So um, what I wanna do is I have a swinger target that I built up there at 50 yards and um, I'm gonna take a shot at each. I think there's six swingers on there, um, some big, some small. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot that uh, with the scope cam and um, you guys can see that. Hopefully we can run all six without a miss. Uh, let's see how good this tune is. All right, ran all six of them without a miss, not bad. Um, that's a pretty good tune, I'd say, especially for this compact setup. So let's run down there. We'll take a look at our uh, groups that we had shot earlier, and then we're gonna move all this stuff out to 96 yards and shoot from the prone position and see what this gun will do. I'm just curious to see how we'll group at that distance. So let's go down there and check out the target. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you where I was shooting from and where I'm shooting at. Um, that little red right there in the center, that's the swinger target that I was shooting at. And um, I always try to walk you guys out there so you guys can see the distance that I am shooting at. But uh, let's walk down there and check it out. All right guys, here we are. So this is our first set of groups. Uh, this is from some previous tuning. Looks like we have a little, a little bit, sorry, a little bit spread out. This one here, was turning into an excellent group and I had one flyer and I know for sure that was the wind. I just held the same position and then um, shot. But that right there is four shots, four shots in that hole. And you can see this circles are the size of my thumb. But I know after a fact shooting yesterday, if I stay out here and shoot, uh, this gun will reliably put groups like this. So when I shot, um, here I adjusted my sights after that and I went over to my swinger target and you can see a center hit there, center, let me see here, center hit there, almost center hit there pretty much, a little bit low, hit it, hit it. So these ones here, they're about the size of my thumb, they're not very big, um, easy to miss on those but as you can see I ran all six of them, didn't miss. Uh, not bad, not a bad tune. So let me get the stuff moved out um, to 96 yards and we'll take some shots from the prone position. All right, guys, let me get into position here. So I'm at 96 yards right now. I've not shot this gun at this distance. Um, I'm gonna guess we're probably shooting seven minutes of angle. So I'm gonna dial that. We're gonna get sighted in, and then I'm gonna actually try and put a group or actually hit some of the smaller swinger targets, see how many times I can hit it. So um, let me get dialed in, and then we'll start shooting. You guys will be able to watch uh, as everything happens.
piece there. So we've got a cross breeze right now. From what I can see in my scope, it looks like our elevation is good. Our windage is just off. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take a shot at our small target right here. Uh, it's a little difficult to dope the wind with these little pellets. I'm going to go back. We'll hold here and put a group. Okay, there's five. All right, looks like I can see where we're hitting. And they're all pretty close. I'm gonna take one shot at our smallest target up there. And we nicked it. That target right there is about the size of my thumb. So not bad for 96 yards. Um, Let's walk down there and uh, see what's going on. All right, before I walk down there, I just wanna show you guys how compact this thing really is. Once it's folded down, you can easily hold it extended, but to carry it, it's easy enough to carry without you know having to carry an awkward position so I'm actually going to carry this down there with us all right guys sorry about that at some point on the way over here, my memory card filled up. So I got a fresh memory card. I did walk all the way over here with it. Um, one thing I was mentioning earlier is that I'm carrying this and you can see I still got quite a ways before it hits the ground. And like I said, I'm not tall at all and uh, it's very easy to carry this gun around with me. Um, one of the most portables I've had. So here's the target that we shot at. Here's where we were first at. Um, I was aiming here. We hit off the target, we hit up here, we hit off to the side with our windage. Um, we have a windage indicator. Hopefully you guys were able to see that while I was shooting. Um, this is the one that I nicked right here. As you can see, it's the size of my thumb. We barely nicked it, but our elevation was good. Just our windage was what was going on. Um, we nicked this one twice. Here is an excellent group. Now, if you look at our vertical spread, it's almost nil. We can call this one a flyer. Um, a lot of these pellets, you know, I didn't sort through these pellets before I shot them, but they definitely would make a difference. Um, all these shots, if you measure the vertical spread, not counting how much the wind pushed it off, you know, that's that's under half an inch, quarter inch from the top to the bottom. So that's excellent. Um, on a calm day, I would have no problems. You know, and this was our hold point right here. <laughs> on a calm day, I would have no problems shooting or no concerns shooting at something at 
you know, 100 yards with this gun, with this setup right now. Um, definitely capable of it. So let's go back to the bench and we'll go over some final thoughts and uh, wrap up the video. All right, guys, we're back here to wrap this one up. I think this is a pretty successful and impressive test. Um, I, I did, I have two cases here because I have Hades, the JSB Hades in one of them, but um, I just didn't have enough to complete the test with, with those, those pellets. I didn't have enough time to tune and have enough left over to go out and shoot all the groups that I wanted to and shoot over the chronograph. So that's why I use the JSB 18 grains, but I personally shoot the JSB Hades out of this the way I have it set up right now. The point of impact is almost the same. It's like a click high, uh, you know, half a minute high and half a minute to the left is what my adjustments were for between the two. Um, it shot them the same the same type of group we got at 50 yards that shoots the Hades the exact same way It's and that's what I prefer to shoot over the JSBs, but the JSBs are great for target practice um, I did do a ballistics test. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that you have to check it out on my channel um, I use the Adam and BP 17, which is also 22 caliber and it's not shooting very fast I did a ballistics gel test with the Hades pellets and the poly mags and I did the other pellets as well, but they just didn't expand. But the Hades and the poly mags expanded great. They mushroomed back, opened up, caused a cavity. And um, those one of those pellets paired with this rifle will definitely reach out to 100 yards to be able to hit something reliably. Um, you saw our grouping that we did today for 96 yards. Uh, a slight breeze is all it takes to blow those pellets off. But our vertical deviation on our shot group, you know, they're all in a straight line. Just And that's all from the wind. You know, um, the gun is shooting very consistent. That amp regulator is uh, doing a good job of keeping things nice and consistent. That bottle is giving us almost four magazines and uh, there's 18 rounds in a magazine. So, and then it's the regulator's at 150 bar. This does have the power plenum on it and uh, it's definitely doing a good job. I'm very happy to have this rifle. One of the biggest pros that I, that we'll, we'll, we'll go over a couple of the pros. One of the big, big things that surprised me with this when I bought the Dreamline I thought you know I have an impact I have Wildcat they're kind of the higher end PCPs the Dreamline would, wouldn't be as nice well as soon as I cocked this thing uh, it is so smooth the smoothest action I've felt on any PCP rifle to date and um you just have to kind of cock it to feel it. It's just, it is literally buttery smooth. I've never felt anything so smooth as this. And the hammer pressure is maxed out for, well, not maxed out, but the hammer pressure is adequate for opening up the 150 bar and the reg pressure. So it, it has no problem opening that up and it's still super smooth. The trigger is uh, very easy to tune. I've got it set up with a very short first stage and uh, the second stage is just about a pound, maybe a, maybe a little bit over a pound. I don't have a trigger scale, but um, I know that my uh, other ones are set up pretty light, and this is about comparable to that. And uh, no creep on the trigger, very clean. Um, having a folding stock is just, unless you've had one, it's <laughs> it's hard to describe how convenient it is to just port, like you know, carry it around with you. Um, it's very very portable. I can stick it all you know wherever I want inside the house or inside the vehicles and uh, it doesn't get in the way. Um, whenever I need to shoot, it offers a, a very stable shooting platform because I can extend it back out and have something shouldered and have a good, you know, a good feel, a good length to hold on to. Um, the Donny FL on here, this is the Donny FL uh, FX version of the silencer, does a perfect job of keeping this gun quiet. It is very, very quiet. Um, I have a Wildcat and uh, shooting that with 25 cal or in 22 cal, um, I've put the Donny FL Ronin on it on occasion and that gun is very quiet, but this one is quieter than that. This is just a very, very quiet gun. Um, I was really impressed by that. We're getting, you know, almost uh, four mags on the on the on the shot count before we have to fill it up, which is excellent for being a 150 bar uh, the regulator. And um, I think that's about it. You know, there's. I, I'm really looking forward to doing a straight heads up comparison with the Adam and BP 17. If you don't know what that gun is, there's a picture of it right there. It's a compact bullpup, same size barrel, has a 14 inch Lothar Walthar match grade barrel. And uh, it's a bullpup version. The whole thing is only 23 inches. And um, you know, the whole thing is shorter than this when it's collapsed. And I really like that rifle and it's a tack driver. I took it uh, squirrel, squirrel hunting this last season and uh, bagged most of my squirrels with headshots, almost all of them. And um, I'm really excited to do a heads up comparison because this really performed well shooting out to 96 yards. And uh, I know this gun and my BP-17 will put one ragged hole at uh, 50 yards. And I'm curious to see which one will maintain that accuracy over a distance. You know, the, the FX rifles with the, having that smooth twist X barrel 
puts less deformation in the pellets, and when you get them out to a distance, that could have an impact on accuracy compared to the Lothar Walthar barrels, which has your traditional lands and grooves uh, barrel uh, rifling in it. Uh, it deforms the pellet slightly more than what this one does, so we'll see if that comes into play. But um, I, I have nothing negative to say about this rifle other than it's it's expensive and it's sold out everywhere. That's it, you know. Short of that, you get what you pay for, and I'm very, very happy to shoot this. I was shooting it yesterday, and when I, I went through my first clip, and I just set, I had to t kind of take a step back and look at it, and I was like, dang, this thing shoots well. It, shoot, it cycles so smooth. It's just a pleasure to shoot. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. I'll always get back to you. Uh, stay tuned for a heads-up comparison with the BP-17 in this rifle. Also, stay tuned for future updates on this rifle. Um, I have a 480cc bottle for it. I'm going to be purchasing the 500 millimeter barrels in all calibers. I'm going to be getting different caliber pellet probes, and uh, we're going to be, you know, stretching this thing out from a compact to a full size at some point in uh, all calibers, and we're going to see what that can do. And uh, just kind of run with the platform. That's a good thing about FX rifles is, uh, you know, you can you can do whatever you want with them once you have it, and uh, it's cheaper than buying a whole nother rifle altogether. So um, another thing, if you guys, like I said earlier, uh, if you guys are interested in these little boxes, uh, leave me a comment and um, I'll get back to you and let you know how uh, you guys can get these. And um, I make them in all different calibers. Like I said, I can customize what you want on the on the logo. This one is you know my, my personal box, so I put my own kind of logo on there. But um, let me know what you guys, if you guys you know, have any uh, interesting suggestions for that and uh, I'll get back to you. But uh, stay tuned, and uh, I'll have another pesting video out in a couple days this week, so stay tuned, and thank you guys for watching.